So welcome back everyone, Mike here. I am convinced springtime is not coming this year. Uh, it's about 38 or 40 degrees here this morning. It's supposed to snow tonight and tomorrow, I think. I don't even pay attention to it anymore. I've decided just to ignore the weather and to go about my business. Uh, but it has been a very long winter and we've all been patiently waiting for spring and it just won't show up. I was talking to Melissa the other night and I said it snowed the end of October, early November, you know, last fall. And here we are, middle of April almost. I mean, it's been over six months. So we have to fit uh, springtime, summer, and fall all into the next six months. So I'm just going to get busy and do my thing and forget about it. Can't do anything else about it. So anyway, today's video is going to be uh, part one of a three-part series on maintaining your gravel driveway. And we're going to try out three different attachments for your tractor. And I'm going to try to show what I think works best in which situation. Two of the three I have a, I've used quite a bit over the years. Uh, the last one I've never used before, so I'm anxious to try that out. So anyway, let me show you the three attachments that we'll be using over the next three videos, and uh, we'll go from there. Thanks. Okay, so here we have a seven foot box blade. Uh, this is an RK by King Cutter, 84 inch Pro Series. That box blade weighs 573 pounds. I have it on the uh, RK55 right now. That's a pretty big box blade. But box blades have always been uh, one of my favorite attachments for a tractor. You can grade driveways with them. It's got the ripper shanks up there. They're great for old driveways. You know, things that are kind of rutted up. But they've had a lot of rock put them on them over the years and they're real hard. Uh, but you can kind of reshape and regrade your driveway with these. It carries material with it as you go. Uh, they work really well. You can push dirt backwards, you can pull dirt forwards. Uh, you can move a lot of dirt with one of these and do a, a really good job with a box blade. So this is one of the attachments that uh, we'll be using. This will probably be part three. Uh, I'll show you how one of these work. Next up we have a, a seven foot land plane. Uh, this is an RK by King Cutter as well. Seven foot dual edge land grader. Uh, this thing comes in at a whopping 690 pounds. Uh, there's a lot of weight there. I have never used a land plane before. People swear by them. It's one of the most uh, asked questions on tractor forums and Facebook pages, you know, tractor related stuff, land plane or box blade. From what I know so far, like I said, I've never used a land plane. They're kind of like a uh, one trick pony, and, uh, but they do that one trick very, very well. Uh, they grade and level driveways and dirt to a very smooth finish and they work very well but I don't believe they're as versatile as a box blade uh, but they do do that one job according to what everybody says very very well so we'll be using the land plane in part two of this series okay I'm sure everybody has seen a rear blade on a tractor before uh, this one is the one we're going to be using in the first video here today of the three-part series how to maintain your gravel driveway. This is an RK by King Cutter. It's a model 5500. This is an 84 inch rear blade and it weighs in at 510 pounds. So this is a very heavy duty, uh, well built rear blade. Currently I have it on the RK37, but I will also be using this blade some on the RK55. I would say out of the three attachments I've shown you so far, uh, the rear blade is probably the most difficult to use properly. Next would be the uh, box blade and then the land plane. And like I said, I never used the land plane, but it looks pretty simple to me. So we'll see here in uh, part two of this video series how easy to use the land plane is. But the rear blades on tractors, if you have a smaller tractor and you have a light duty rear blade on it, there's just not much weight to it. And if you have an old driveway that's you know really packed down and the rocks, it's real tight, a rear blade is just going to kind of want to hop across it. It's kind of hard to cut with it on really hard ground. Whereas with the box scraper, you can adjust those rippers, you can loosen it up, take your time, and kind of rebuild the whole thing. But I like a rear blade for like shaping, cleaning ditch lines. If you've got a lot of gravel on the edge of your roads that you want to bring back into the center, a rear blade's great for that back filling ditches I mean they are a very very versatile machine uh, attachment and uh, there's a got to be thousands of different ways you can set this thing up
So this road that I'm working on, this is a private drive, and I actually own this road. Uh, it's not far from my house, and it's kind of funny how things happen. About 18 years ago, I bought this piece of property back there behind me. Uh, I think there's 40 acres, and I didn't really have good access to it, so I traded some property to get this right away where I'm standing right now. And then I rented a uh, little 350 John Deere dozer, and back then I had a little Kubota 2350, I think it was, and that's what I built this road with. We cleared all the trees in one day, and I'll never forget that. I had myself and about five friends of mine, and I remember we kept track. It was 190 trees. I pulled a big chipper behind the tractor, threw all the firewood off to the side, and then I rented a, uh, well, I hired somebody with a big stump grinder on an excavator to grind all the stumps, and then I put geotextile down, number three limestone, which is about this big, and then Crusher Run, which is inch and a half down to dust. And it made a really good road. And, uh, but over the years, the homeowners back here, they will buy gravel as needed, and they keep putting more gravel on it, and they don't need any more gravel. So all I'm trying to do here today, with the rear blade on the RK37, is pull that gravel back into the road. Now, I'm not worried about getting it real smooth. I'm just trying to get the gravel back in without chasing too much of it out into the woods. And uh, they should have put some Crusher Run on here, but they keep ordering this uh, 2B limestone. It's kind of like marbles. And as the traffic in and out, in and out, it just keeps working its way to the outside. So all I'm doing is bringing that gravel back in, and then I will uh, go get that land plane on the RK55, put a nice finish on this, and it should be good for a while. But next time, I hope they get uh, some Crusher Run, which is inch and a half down to dust. This kind of limestone, if it's perfectly flat, it's okay. But once you get hills or people driving kind of fast or whatever, it's just like marbles on the road. Because like I said, I had that real hard base underneath of it. And so this stuff's just sitting on top. So anyway, that's it. I don't know how much battery I have left, so I may wrap this video up right here. And uh, I'll see you on the next one, which is part two of how to maintain your gravel drive. Thanks.